the main tactic that the enemy used to keep people minds away well basically not on how he lures people to hear his voice and not to hear the voice of God is that he lures you away from keeping God's commandments that is the first thing the the, the less not What's going on YouTube? What's going on JJL family? We are back with another video and it's been a long time. Well, okay, I'm gonna stop right there. It's not been a long time. It's been about two weeks. But for me, not communicating with you guys, it's been too long. Um, So in between time, let me, let me get you speeded up. If that's even the right way to say it, speed it up. I have had a couple issues where I needed to focus outside of YouTube that was called to my attention. So um, I took care of that. I also was in the process of transitioning uh, from the cell phone camera, this right here, you can see, no more cell phone, front face, selfie stick, none of that. I finally got my vlogging camera, I got my vlogging set up. God is good, God has blessed me because I really wanted to push the content to the best quality that I could deliver to uh, my audience. And it would just would allow me to be more creative. But um, never mind that, okay? So what I wanted to talk about today is a couple things that I've witnessed in my own walk over time, especially within the last month, about how strong the enemy's voice can be when an individual is walking outside the will of God. Some people say, "Well, I, I know, I understand. I'm, I, it won't happen to me." Well, let me let me re remind you of what happened to Sister Eve back in the Garden of Eden. Um, some way, somehow, she her sin led her to bite the fruit. Her sin led her to listen to the voice of the devil. Her sin led her to persuade her husband that disobeying God was right, okay? So I wanna just today, I wanna day in this vlog, man, really, really, really talk about what happened, what's going on, and how do we determine, how do we distinguish? Can we even feel the negative presence when the devil speaks to us? And how does it feel when God speaks to us? One of the one of the one of the ways. The first way I want to everyone to really understand what I'm saying. Okay. The main tactic that the enemy used to keep people minds away. Well, basically, not on how he lures people to hear his voice and not to hear the voice of God, is that he lures you away from keeping God's commandments. That is the first thing. The, the, the less knowledge you have about the will of God, the less knowledge you have about his commandments, the more entitled you are, good morning, uh, the more entitled you are to hear the enemy's voice. Basically what I was saying was that if, we could, if, if the enemy can lure you away from the knowledge of God, then he has a clear advantage over the fact that your mind isn't able to understand what 
God is trying to say to you. So example, here's an example. Let's say Paul, for example, this is a prime example. Paul says, what I want to do, I do not do. But what I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Make a long story short, the brother also says in the scripture, he said, he said, how would I know? He said, he said, he said, how would I not know what lust was except for the law said thou shalt not covet? So where did he get the knowledge of understanding that he was sinning from? The law of God. The Bible says in, in, in Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments tell us thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. So therefore he understood that he had a lust problem because the law showed him thou shalt not covet. You understand what I'm saying? So the more knowledge, and I'm trying to stay in the light. The more knowledge that we get from the word of God and the understanding his will and the putting his will into practice, the more likely you are to understand like, yo, God wouldn't want me to do that. God wouldn't want me to be involved with anything like that. Therefore, you will find yourself not fulfilling the acts or the lust or the flesh. That's another one. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, um, it talks about the works of the flesh. There are many works of the flesh. It's, and he said some are wrath, anger, jealousy, um, lasciviousness, lewdness. And, and, and God speaks that these works of the flesh are not his will. And so if you're having a struggle to keep in the commandments of God, you're having a struggle not to act on the works of the flesh. And every time you turn around, there was a prompt in your mind to do those things that you don't want to do. Then therefore, my friend, that is the voice of the enemy trying to seduce you and to get you into sin. Think about it. Another way that the enemy attacks us and that we cannot distinguish from his voice from God's is the feeling of anxiety that comes upon us when we're in deep thought. Have you ever found yourself somewhere, man, dazed out, caught in a, I'm gonna say a trance. We call it daydreaming. And in those daydreaming, there was a thought process that's happening, okay? And in that thought process that's happening, we're like, just spazed out on it. I remember years ago, and I think the only way for me to really explain this is to be transparent and brutally honest. There was a situation going on in my life many years ago. I'm waiting till this car passed to finish. Situation going on in my life many, many years ago, okay? And I was so frustrated, I was so stressed, I was filled with so much anxiety, so much, so much war in my mind that I found myself daydreaming. When I realized what I was daydreaming about, which it was totally evil, I was, when I woke up out of the daydream, I was smiling. And I said, yo, this is an evil thought. Why am I smiling? It was because I was entertained, lured by the voice of the enemy. And so why I'm explaining this to you is this, is because you have to understand the will of God. When you, when God is about peace, God isn't about confusion. God isn't about those depressing, sunken feelings that's going on in your heart. You can't eat, you can't sleep. It's just always something going on in your life. God is not about that. God is about peace and understanding. And so what the enemy take advantage of is when you do not know the will of God and when you do not know his word, when you do not know the commandments of God, you do not know when to ask Jesus for grace and for peace. You understand? You do not know when to ask Jesus for grace and clarity. And the devil will make sure that you're surrounded by people who will put you in a negative state, who will speak negative to you. Yeah, they may come with some type of, some form of knowledge, some form of excitement, some form of, uh, some form of understanding to your situation. But if you're not walking in the will of God and the people that you're surrounded with not walking in the will of God, it will be very hard for you 
to come out of that state and come out of that sunken feeling. And it would go years and years and years would go by and you would say, why has God abandoned me? It's not that God has abandoned you. The point is, you have abandoned God. Because in their mind, it's more important and it's more fun to see what somebody, some fool is doing on social media than to hear someone who God is using to talk about something. And what I'm talking about is goals in life. How to pick this, how to overcome this obstacle, how to do this. And the reason why children are so lost and the devil is still in so many children in Christian homes is because the children love their gadget, social media, more than God. So in church, the Bible said a wise son will sit that safety amongst many counselors. Counselors. A wise son will soak up instructions, but a fool, a fool would despise it. And we see scriptures being fulfilled when children sit in church, when the men of God is speaking about life, which you have to go through. We don't be in where you at. We going to higher levels. You still got to get where we at now. So if we're talking about something, it's good to put the gadget down and listen. And learn the Bible say he to have ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the church. Okay. So, like I said, we're now leaving service, and service was good. You know what I mean? It kind of touched on basically what I've been talking about this morning. And I'm sorry that it's going dark on us, but it's the lighting where I'm at between whatever whatever but it is what it is it's just a sunny day for once it's been raining like crap all week but anyway i'm we on the way home man and um i'm gonna finish this vlog in a bit and um you know basically what was talked about in church is basically i'm gonna sum it all up is that and basically what i've been saying if you do not know the word of god or the will of god you're more than you you will be more acceptable to listening to the voice of the devil. It's simple. You know what I'm saying? So, and when, when he talked about it, like, made so, it made so much sense. And I wish I could record everything, but can't do that. So anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Anyway, he said, well, dude, you don't change your clothes. Man, listen, church is, like I said, church is over with now, and I'm home, and I'm about to hit you with part number three, okay? And then after that, I'm going to take some pictures and enjoy the rest of this weather. Like I said, North Carolina weather has been crazy, and we have not had any sunny days as of lately, So I'm going to enjoy it. So here's the deal, man. Number three about of how... The devil's voice, by hearing the devil's voice and interacting with it as such, okay? Satan is an accuser of the brethren. 
he sits back and he finds fault in people, okay? And the main person, the main being, he finds, always trying to find fault in God. Have you ever noticed how people always say it's God's fault, why God allowed this? It is the, that, is the, that is the conversation of the devil, is to always try to find fault in God, okay? And then on top of that, we, how you know you listen to the devil's voice? Because he's always trying to find fault in your brothers. Whether it be your brothers in your church or your spouse in your household, somebody. He's always trying to find fault and place the blame on other people. So that you will never grow and learn how to take responsibilities for your own actions. So if you're a type of person who's always finding fault with someone else and gossiping and bringing other people down and trying and pouring out other people's wrongs and never can really see your own, maybe you've been listening to the voice of the devil. You know, our enemy ain't come, the, the devil ain't here to try to be, break bread with us and be friendly with us. He care nothing about you. And so many people are giving their will over to the devil daily, sitting back, not trusting God to help them overcome their sins, to study the word of God, to get closer, better, to get uh, a closer relationship with them. But listen, I hope that this vlog actually turns out great for you guys. Like I said, it's been a minute. I got a new camera. I'm just trying to experiment with more things to continue to get better for you. All right, y'all, I'm gonna take a, little, take a little break, probably catch some B-roll or some nature and end it with that. All right, y'all, peace, love, and God bless. Thank you.